guys welcome thanks for tuning in today we're going to discuss influenza which is always a relevant topic to be discussed so let's jump right into it influenza also known as the flu is caused by the influenza virus once the virus enters your body it settles in the nose throat and lungs the flu affects everyone differently so one person may get the illness and it may be very severe where another person may get the flu and it may not cause them as much harm Flu symptoms usually begin about two days after the illness starts. Symptoms can vary from fever, dry cough, headaches, extreme tiredness, sore throat, achy body, sneezing, runny or stuffy nose. A person with the flu can also experience stomach illnesses such as nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. And these stomach complications are more common in children that have the flu versus adults. There are several ways the flu can spread, but flu viruses are mainly spread by droplets from the sneeze or cough of a person that has the flu or by touching an object with flu viruses on it. And the flu is mostly contagious three to four days after the illness begins. As we discussed earlier guys, the flu affects everyone differently. Some may recover from the flu in days, some in weeks, but then there are others who may experience some serious health complications as a result of having the flu, such as pneumonia, ear and sinus infections, dehydration. Some may experience the worsening of a current medical condition they have. For example, if you have asthma, diabetes, or congestive heart failure, getting the flu could possibly make those medical conditions worse. Anyone can get the flu. It doesn't matter how healthy you are, but there are some people who are at high risk for very serious complications if they get the flu, such as elderly people, typically 65 years or older, and young children under the age of five. And this is because when a person gets old, their thymus will start to decline, and in young children, their thymus isn't fully developed yet. This will result in both a young child and an elderly person being unable to produce T cells, making it harder for their bodies to fight against the flu. And also, having chronic medical conditions such as diabetes, heart disease, or asthma can put you at high risk for developing serious health complications from the flu virus. There are three main classes of the influenza virus, and we like to call them the ABCs of flu viruses. Influenza A and B are responsible for the flu season in the United States, and C is the most mild virus of all of them. And there is a D, but it only infects cattle, but all types are classified by their protein. Influenza A is the most virulent, infecting animals and humans, making it the main cause of worldwide flu outbreaks. There are two main subtypes of influenza A. There's hemagglutinin, which has 18 subtypes of its own, and there's neuraminidase, which has 11 types of its own. And then these types can combine to form another type of the virus. Because influenza B has a lower mutation rate and a limited host range, meaning it only infects humans, this results in less outbreaks of the influenza B type virus. Influenza B has no subtypes, but the virus does have different strains. Influenza C only infects humans, and it is the least acquired of the three virus types. It may cause mild disease in children, but other than that, it's the least severe of the three. The flu season in the U.S. is fall through winter and peaks during November through March. And during the flu season, the influenza virus is usually acquired by inhaling the respiratory secretions of a person with the flu. When the virus enters the body, it uses their hemagglutin spikes to attach to the host cell. Then the virus will fuse with the host membrane and the host will then replicate the virus's genetic material. And remember, viruses aren't alive, so they can't replicate. They have to insert their genetic material into the host and then get the host cell to replicate for them. Now mature viruses will undergo a process called budding to pick up the membrane of the host. And might I add, this process is happening only until the host's immune system attacks. Hemagglutinin, the protein spikes located on the top layer of the virus, allows it to bind to the host and insert its genetic material. And when someone gets vaccinated against the flu, the hemagglutinin polypeptide is going to be the vaccine's main target. It's also going to be the main target of the immune system to fight against the virus. Neuraminidase is a viral enzyme that allows the virus to be released after it infects the whole cell. And remember, enzymes function to speed up chemical reactions or sometimes make them easier. So the process where the virus inserts their genetic material into the host is going to make that process easier for the virus. 
So together, neuraminidase and hemagglutinin will result in replication of the virus until the immune system attacks, of course. Also, these Na and HA polypeptides are what helps us to give the viruses their names. For example, H5N1 is the name of the influenza virus. The H5 stands for hemagglutinin type 5, and the N1 stands for neuraminidase type 1. So there are ways to prevent the flu. A yearly flu vaccine can prevent up to four virus types. Try to avoid close contact with an infected person, and if you have the flu virus, try to avoid contact with other people to avoid spreading it. Cover your nose and mouth with a tissue when you sneeze or cough. And hand washing. Wash your hands often with soap and water whether you have the flu or not. There are possible side effects that accompany flu vaccination. These symptoms are very mild and only last up to two days at the most. And side effects are different in everybody. You may experience soreness, headaches, swelling, redness, a fever, or pain in the muscle and joints. And again, these symptoms are very mild and can vary amongst individuals. The flu is treated with antiviral drugs. There is also Tamivir phosphate, which can be taken as a pill or administered through a liquid. There is Zanamivir, which is inhaled as a powder using an inhaler. There is Paramivir, which is administered through IV. And then there is Galaxivir, which is a pill to be taken orally. Now, these drugs don't prevent the flu or take the place of the flu vaccine, but they will help to lessen the symptoms you're experiencing as a result of getting sick. And that is the end of our informative lecture on influenza. And please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time.